about to give y'all an exclusive. On this episode of I'm Not a Lawyer, but the deep <gasps> Know all you women out Wait, there. say it again. That's just some pictures. <laughs> Watch out for that one too. Uh, it's horrible. If you're not ready, then go ahead and tell me you're not ready. I object to you getting records. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. In other words, the car didn't hit him, and he wasn't hit by the car. I'm not a lawyer, but. Are y'all keeping up? I'm not a lawyer, but... The Debrief. Hello, and welcome to another episode of I'm Not a Lawyer, But... The Debrief. I am Mel, a.k.a. I'm Not a Lawyer, But... And I'm joined by my co-host... Goosebe, how y'all doing? And we are not legal experts. We're not lawyers, certainly. Um, but we get on the podcast and talk about a bunch of legal stuff that we have no idea about. Um, and every now and again, we have a guest join us. And we also like to thank our sponsors. Magic Mind. Amen. We're going to tell mm -hmm. you more about them. Um, but we are so excited to have a guest join us today. And so we're going to get into that. We're so excited to have a guest join us today. We never mm -hmm. talk about the fact that I, I always just say my co-host, but my co-host is also my husband. And so we're so excited to have a family law attorney today. Yes, She's going to join us and, and talk to us about all the things. So please join us in welcoming Lauren, the lawyer, to our episode. Hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hello, hello. All right. So first, can you tell us? who you are we know you as lauren the lawyer you're all over the internet doing all of the things but kind of tell us who you are what kind of attorney or lawyer that you are and uh where you practice okay i am lauren i am from new orleans i moved to dallas about seven years ago okay um i am a family law attorney but i'm more than just that i'm a wife <laughs> I am a mom to our two cats. <laughs> I am not just a daughter. I'm the only child oh. and the only grandchild. So I am very special. All the pressure. Okay. Wow. Very sp uh, special is a better way than me saying pressure. <laughs> you know, so uh, I am a sorority sister. I'm an okay. AKA. Um, I am a ball of energy. I think I'm an exciting and fun person to be around. I, agree. I think my family and friends find to be quite funny <laughs> but my professional life is really the most interesting part about my life my regular life is normal <laughs> a bit you have quite so um what made you want to go into family law crazy thing i've been wanting to do this since i was five years old oh my god so my grandmother would pick me up from school every wednesday because that was like a meeting day for my mom and you know i'm getting away with murder at my grandmother's house <laughs> yep but my grandmother was very old school she refused to get cable so she had like just the news station so at four o'clock i don't know if you remember judge maybelline she used yes. to be like the original divorce court mm -hmm. judge and I didn't have much else to watch so i would be sitting there eating my snacks and i looked i said i want to be her and that was it. From that day forward, from kindergarten on, I just started on my journey. I love that. That's, That's amazing. So I know. Your grandma was sitting there watching the TV with you, too. <laughs> Thank God she didn't have cable. I would have been watching cartoons or something, but no, I was watching Judge Maybelline, which started this whole career path. That's dope. We're uh, getting rid of, the, rid of the pads oh, and gosh. cable. We have two children and oh, you want them watch to be Judge Lloyd. Judy or somebody. <laughs> you want them to be attorneys? Um, <laughs> If you were not doing family law, what other law do you think you would be into? Or is there one? I love what I do. Okay. I could do anything I want to do. Uh, I, I think attorney life and like doctor life is a little bit different. I feel like doctors go to residency, particularly for something specific. Yeah. When you go to law school and you pass the bar, you get a bar card that says you can practice law, period. Okay. So I can practice any law that I want. So I'm not limited to family law. I think the fact that I don't practice any other law says I, I'm happy with what I'm doing. Yeah. But I think I 
I admire a bunch of other areas that I okay. don't do, but I could see me doing. Okay. One thousand percent still be a trial attorney. Okay. I love the courtroom. Okay. So if I did something else, I would still be in court. But I have some great personal injury friends. Okay. I find that area to be exciting. Okay. Um, I have a really good friend who's a DUI attorney. Oh. I oh, and I like specifically DUIs. deals with DUIs. This DUI is not any other criminal law huh. area. Even though DUIs is, falls under criminal law, yeah. she doesn't do any other crime. She only does DUIs, and I just love watching her trial. She cross examines the experts, talks about oh the world, yeah, the, the alcohol <laughs> level. And I love all that expertise stuff. Yeah, and estate planning is oh, another exciting. That's, that's the one I was I wanted to ask you about estate planning. Do that you was, dib and dab in that? So that was actually my favorite subject in law school, but I've mm -hmm. never actually put it into practice and I've wanted to for years. It's just that family law keeps me so busy. I just have to make myself abreast on what's going on currently today mm -hmm. with that area of law because learning it in law school and actually doing it for mm -hmm. living is two different things. But I would love to see what it's like to have your clients be dead people. <laughs> I think that's pretty exciting too. <laughs> <laughs> Very different. Pretty cool. Yeah. So no argument. Fun, but if I really cared, I would have done it, and I haven't. Yeah. So that's where I'm. Okay. So family law. No one ever comes to you and and talks about the inheritance or like the property left by. Um, like what's included in family yeah. law? We know yeah. when we gonna get to divorce, but what else is included in it? Well, to answer your first question, yes, it comes up all the time because people are trying to protect things when they no longer want to be together. So, yes, inheritances do, do come up in divorce conversations. Mm -hmm. So I'm not there to help protect the assets that you potentially are getting. That would be for a estate planning attorney. Okay. So if your parent passed away or anything was left to you and y'all are fighting, that's an estate planning attorney or a probate attorney if the person's already gone. Mm -hmm. But if you've received something and now you're going through a divorce, you might be asking me, how do I protect the house my mama gave me? Something like that. I know that area of how to get you protected in a divorce. I'm not the person you would come to if you say, I don't want to go through probate. How do I set up a trust? Or, okay. you know, or my mom has and all the siblings are fighting. Who's going to get this or that? That would be a probate attorney. So estate planning of the people who set up everything while you're alive. Probate attorneys handle everything once you're gone. Okay. So mm. when people inherit things before, during their marriage, and now they're going through a divorce, that's when it comes to me. And okay. I handle the division of the property in the divorce, not more so the estate planning, probate, somebody that died and we got to fix this. Got it. Mm. But it was my favorite subject in law school, and I probably should have did that. <laughs> <laughs> they both seem exciting. I mean, just intriguing. Yeah. yeah. They're that's both cool. pretty wild because... I could say one thing about probate attorneys, family law attorneys, and criminal law attorneys. The one thing we have in common is that all of us are dealing with people who are going through the worst mm -hmm. day of their life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. None of our clients are going through a walk in the park. So that's one thing we can all relate on. Criminal law attorneys are dealing with people who are, their life, their freedom is on the line. Mm -hmm. My clients are potentially about to lose their life, their home, their retirement, so much yeah. that they've recalled for their children. Yeah. You know, and then you have the probate attorneys who are dealing with this family who's grieving. They just lost a loved one and everybody is at each other's throats because, you know, grief brings out a lot of terrible mm -hmm. things in people, too. So that's one thing we all have in common. But to answer your second question, what is family law? There's a bunch of areas uh, you can do. And I don't do everything. I do okay. stuff I like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what I do, I handle divorces, uncontested, contested, complex, not complex. I handle custody issues, child support issues. I also handle modifications because let's say someone got divorced five years ago and what's in their terms today isn't working out. We need to make some modifications. So I do handle modifications. Oh. I also do enforcement. Enforcement is when someone's violating that court order. And now we got to act the fool. <laughs> <laughs> so that's called an enforcement. I also handle protective orders. So that specifically oh. is not just domestic violence is like, a bigger umbrella in the criminal sense, like a husband and like a father and son could be fighting in the front yard and that's considered domestic violence. Anybody okay. you live with is mm -hmm. considered domestic violence. How I, the family violence that I deal with has to be a couple. Oh. We have to be tied to each other either by marriage or a child. Okay. 
So it's a violence against the child or violence against a husband and wife. So I also handle protective orders, but there's a bunch of area of family law that I don't handle. Like I don't okay. uh, do adoptions. Oh. Um, I don't draft prenups or postnups. I do enforce them or tear them apart <laughs> in a divorce and trial. So I deal with them once they've already handled it. I don't draft them. Okay. Um, surrogacy issues. You know, a lot of mm. women now are having issues with IVF and getting pregnant. So now surrogacy law is really big on the rise. So there's a bunch of things that I don't do. I don't do CPS cases. So there's a lot under family law. Now we've been talking to a family lawyer and as a family lawyer, you need strong mental capacity. Like what we've been talking about, you're going to go through some things. Your brain has to be focused. All right. Well, I'm not a lawyer, but I do have a family and I do get unfocused sometimes and what I use to get back focused is magic mind okay now I use magic mind for when I go work out so I can stay focused doing my workouts and some of you all go to the gym and be on your phone that be pissing me off because <laughs> you're not focused the best way well not the best but you can use magic mind and it can help you focus get in and out the gym and um yeah, it's a it's a mental performance shot. All right. Magic Mind is made up of ashwagandha, organic lion's mane, uh, B2, B3, B12 vitamins and um, other organic ingredients. OK, it's third party tested and it's been in development for 10 plus years. It's also in Sprouts, Central Market and Irwin these are grocery stores the company also donates five cents to each bottle sold to mental health uh, charities across the united states you have a limited offer you can use now that gets you 48 percent off your first subscription or 20 percent off on your one-time purchase with the code lawyer 20 lawyer 20 lawyer at 20? checkout you can claim it at www.magicmind dot com slash lawyer 20 lawyer 20 yeah. no that was helpful though because i don't oh, yeah. even think i realized that all of that is even like encompassed in family law like i had yeah. no idea that i mean it makes sense but like surrogacy and adoption like duh family but i yeah. didn't <laughs> i didn't put it together That's yeah. CPS, they do, they're doing a lot of terminations like parents be trying to kill their kids and um, you know ooh. they're terminating parental rights right. and putting up a child for adoption I leave all that alone. Okay. <laughs> mm. I, I I agree with you. I would leave okay. that alone too, especially adoptions and um, uh, the last one you said, Sarah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I did okay. one adoption. I said I could never do another one. Mm -mm. I'm sure that's tough. Ooh. That's a lot. Um. Okay. Divorce. Mm -hmm. What do most people outside of children? Because I imagine that people fight a lot about kids hold on, hold on, hold on. Kids. Yes. i think this is my question first okay, okay. <laughs> once you're married mm -hmm. everything is 50 50 depends on your marriage. <laughs> if if you don't have a prenup or whatever mm -hmm. oh really okay so <laughs> well that's that's what i'm assuming <laughs> and that's what everybody's assuming so we get married we buy a home we buy a car, we do the family thing. Everything's 50-50 then. So are you talking about your structure in your marriage? Or are you talking about when you don't want to be married anymore and who gets what? Yes, the second part. When we get so, because, when we have a divorce and hey, let's go our separate ways. No. And really? you have to also remember that every this is one thing that's so interesting about the country we live in. Every state is like treated like its own little country. So mm. what's going on here in Texas is not going on with my neighbors to the South and Louisiana is not going on to the West or, you know, East of me. Every state is completely different. So I can only talk about how Texas is handling things, but it could be completely different right next door. So in Texas, we don't we don't have one law that says things are split 50 50 in a divorce. The law wow. says that things are split just and right. And sometimes just in right is not 50-50. Sometimes it's 60-40, 70-30, 80-20. Wow. 
So it's not always 50-50. Sometimes Justin Wright is 50-50, mm. but not all the time. It's, I thought you was about to do like an old country accent. Like, no. <laughs> it ain't 50-50 right, down here, like buddy. Louisiana accent in there. <laughs> okay. Man, that's, that's surprising to me. Okay. Yeah. This I, outside of children, what do you find in your experience that people fight about most? Probably money. Outside of children, money. <laughs> the property. Property. The that property. People fight over their kids a lot, but people fight over their property just as much. Yeah. I had a trial once. This was years ago. The people didn't argue about their kids. They had the kids all figured out. We went to trial on one issue, and it was over a motorcycle. A wow. Motorcycle. A motorcycle. Somebody's being petty. Mm-hmm. I was gonna he say said it was a Father's Day gift. She said it is not a Father's Day gift. This is a marital property vehicle, oh. and mm. I want you to sell it, and I want half. Mm. Because gifts from your spouse is not a part of the marital estate. So he was trying to say it was a gift. That's, oh. he, didn't want, he didn't want that motorcycle to be a part of the divorce. Yeah, gifts from your spouse is not community property. It's not a marital asset. So if your spouse gives you a gift, it's yours. It's, it's your yours. separate property. So he wanted that motorcycle to be separate property. Got and it. she was like, oh, no, no. You're going to come up off that bike. <laughs> <laughs> and and who were you representing? Him. <laughs> <laughs> The greedy one. <laughs> but the law yeah. is the law. The law is the law. And how Texas law is written, it says everything that you get during the marriage is community property unless you can show otherwise by clear and convincing evidence. I said, give me something. Yeah. And we can show this as a gift. You got a Facebook post that says, hey, before all this day, yeah. look what my wife bought me. Yeah. Give me something. Because if you cannot prove that it's a gift, guess what? It's community property. Oh. That's what they said it was. I wow. said, you could have saved your money because I told you that's what was about to happen. <laughs> I told you you going to sell it. We didn't even have to fight over this. I told you it was going to happen. Oh, man. How does, not how, does, does an engagement ring differ as to what happened? So you made a video, right? Before you get married and you are given an engagement ring that is a conditional gift the condition being once we're going to get married so if you are if you don't get married you have to give it back right right so that's what we learned in law school that's just common law okay right? that it is a gift that is attached to a con- condition will you marry me uh-huh. if you say yes then now the contract is in exchange for marriage you get to keep this ring okay right so if the marriage doesn't happen, then the condition is broken and you don't get to keep the ring. However, there was a case oh. that came out. So we have regular, it's so it's so deep, right? You have a regular law, then you have like statutes, then you have case law. You have cases that turn into law. Mm-hmm. There was some case law that happened, I believe here in Texas, that discussed, it depends on who ended the engagement. Oh. Mm-hmm. See, that's, I like that. If you if you end in it, give me Marine back. But see, that never comes across. I agree. I do agree. <laughs> but that never comes across my desk because I deal with people who either are married and going through a divorce or maybe they they are married, but they're going through a custody issue. So it's all about the child. Mm-hmm. You would have that dispute as a ex-fiance couple with like a property attorney. Yeah. Well, what, what I family court. I was going to ask, does what happens once you get married? So if you don't get married and then you have to give it back with the, the gray area you just mentioned, but when you do get married and now we're going through a divorce, what hap- whose ring is it? Everyone's jewelry is their jewelry, oh, right? Okay. Because you also have to remember that the ring was given to you prior to the marriage. Oh, so The ring is not a part of the marital estate. The marital it. estate is everything you acquired during the marriage, yeah. right? Okay. Now, let's say you got a ring upgraded or something like that. Then mm-hmm. you could probably start to become petty, but it, it's, it becomes very tricky too, because remember, gifts from your spouse is your separate property. Got it. So a lot of times they'd be like, Merry Christmas, happy birthday, mm-hmm. happy anniversary. You're able to establish that it's a gift and convert it to your separate property. Got it. But usually people don't give rings back after divorce. And I need, if there's any men listening online, hear yes. me clearly. You cannot take your last name back. Please stop asking. Oh, man. Stop <laughs> asking. I don't even understand why dudes do that. That's oh, try to get their name back. It's dumb. Yeah, it makes no, unless, obviously, unless the uh, young lady is like, 
a dictator somewhere and like, <laughs> just about to run your name through the mud. <laughs> I'm, I mean, there's a lawsuit for everything, right? I'm sure that that could be the next file, but in a divorce, is not going to happen. Whoever has that name legally determines if they want to give it up or not. Mm. Mm. Makes sense. Uh, I'll move on to another question. Um, well, just because you're kind of mentioning it and the fact that, you know, when you're in bliss, you're in bliss and all of a sudden that goes left and now you have to think about things you were, you were not previously thinking about. So that said, and, you know, practicing um dealing with all the divorces and all of that you do what do people what should people know before getting married like is your what is the best advice get a prenup don't <laughs> marry get married but be write things down like what is your advice <laughs> just know what you're getting yourself into right because marriage in itself is forget what you stand to lose if you divorce like just think about the things that you go through making a marriage work, right? You have to be okay with giving yourself like that to someone. And you need, then you need to make sure you're doing it with the right person. Mm -hmm. If you are unsure that it's the right person, then you can do some things to protect yourself. Um, but I don't think there's no area of law that is like a one size fit all. I don't think, I'm not, I don't think everyone on the planet should get a prenup. Mm -hmm. I don't have a prenup. But then again, I didn't have anything to protect when I was getting married. I, I was about to say, that back in college, you was right. I got a cheese, bro. Well, I was broke. How we going to afford to get a prenup? We got to pay for that, too. I didn't have nothing. Like, we built everything while being together. So yeah. I didn't have anything to protect. But let's just say I met my husband today as already a divorce attorney. Yeah. Things, my, my perspective on life is a little different. bit different, right? Mm -hmm. Or if I met someone much later in life, let's say my 50s or something like yeah. that then I might have established a whole bunch that I want to protect, but I didn't have anything. So it's not a one size fit all thing, but if you do have something that you are a little concerned about, then by all means, protect yourself. And there's ways to still protect yourself by not doing a prenup. Some people could say, you know, I'm going to marry just, just no reserves. I'm not going to do a prenup. And if something mm -hmm. happens in your marriage, you like, Hold up. This might not be a divorceable offense, but I need to make sure that if it ends up being that way, that I protect myself. You can do a post note. So oh. I, after you're married, now I want to draft something to protect something. Yeah, something. you can do uh, some states called it a marital property agreement. Some oh. states call it a post nuptial agreement. But you and your spouse can enter into agreements during the marriage on who's going to keep what. And there's also some agreements that you can only do when you are married that you cannot do in a oh, uh, uh The post-nup, you both have to agree agree well, with it. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. on a prenup, both of you guys have to sign. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, say <clears throat> me and Mel, we're married. We married in Georgia, mm -hmm. right? Now we're in California. Our those lo The laws just carry... Like which do they follow you or do now we're living in LA so we have to go by the California laws of marriage. So if California is similar to Texas, then you would follow the laws of the state that you're a resident in. Oh. So mm -hmm. if I, Texas doesn't care where you got married when 30, 40, 50, sometimes five minutes ago, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you are a resident of Texas and you're divorcing here, you will follow the rules of this state. Now it gets a little bit more complicated when you have prenups that might fall in line with one state's rules but doesn't fall in line with your current state's rules but a lot of times in that regard because remember they weren't married at the time when you're doing a prenup mm -hmm. that state will uphold the prenup as long as it is valid for the state that you lived in at the time that you signed it, Got it. but it, if california is anything like texas whatever california's rules are that's your rules for divorcing mm -hmm. so it's wherever you live the state that you're divorcing in. So yes. And you, yeah. you can't just file anywhere. You have to be a resident of the state that you're divorcing. Like you have to live in Texas six months and you have to, that's the time frame to be a resident. You have to live here for six months and you file in the county that you've lived in for at least 90 days. Mm. Have you heard of people? Um, I don't know the details of this. I've just heard that you can get a divorce like online. <laughs> Is that a thing? I don't know how. I mean, are, are judges online signing divorce decrees? No, like they're at the courthouse. Okay. Right. <laughs> so I don't All know right. how people are doing oh. that. I, I, okay. <laughs> There's like specific examples in my head. Somebody they probably told got an AI judge that, or like something. Like they right. could. Like what is, 
what is a way to get a divorce without an attorney? Maybe that's a better way to ask that. Is that possible? Yeah, I mean, it's, anything's possible, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a builder, but I can surely go down to oh. the Home Depot and give me mm -hmm. some sticks and start hammering them into <laughs> like the ground. Mm -hmm. That don't mean it's going to be nothing worth living in, but I can go do it. So okay. people are free to go do whatever they want to do. doesn't mean it's going to be correct. Yeah, okay. That may have been a better way. See, to it's the difference between doing something right versus just doing it. Yeah. And sometimes you don't even realize how bad it is until stuff starts to fall apart. I can go build a house, but as soon as a good thunderstorm come in, <laughs> mm -hmm. the house on the ground. So yes. sometimes you think you're doing something right until something comes up and then you realize it's all wrong. Yeah. So, and it costs more money to have an attorney fix your mess mm -hmm. versus what you would have paid them to just do it right on the front end. It always costs you more on the back end. Yeah, because I know some of us got some aunties and uncles that been living together forever, married or whatever, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they split up and there was no divorce. Such such just moved here and such such just moved there, and now it's just that. Yeah. yeah, it's a dangerous game, especially if you live in a community property state like I do. Dangerous game. It's like a uh, common law. You wouldn't have. You would. Would you have to deal with something like that? Yeah. So every also every states. Are di every state is different on the mm -hmm. rules on how you get to common law marriage. Okay. Um, like I think California, from what I've heard, I'm guessing, mm -hmm. I hear it's like a length of time that you have to be together. Mm -hmm. Texas is not that. I could meet Joe off the street and we could become common law married the same day we meet. So oh, Texas wow. rules on common law marriage is completely different. What you have to do in if I had a dollar for every person who thought they were common law marriage, I, I would be retired <laughs> and on a yacht somewhere. That's how many times it has happened. But they, you have to have all three. There's three major components. And okay. most people have one. They might have two, but you got to have all three. Number one, you have to cohabitate here in Texas. Okay. Number two, you have to hold yourself out as each other's spouses. So that means, oh, this is my husband or this is my wife. Like you, you can't be running around saying this is my girlfriend. You got to actually hold yourself out as spouses. Okay. Then most importantly, the one that nobody has. Okay. Is the agreement to be a married couple. Oh. That's oh, where they yeah. fail. Nobody does. <laughs> like so they don't have, they be like, oh, we've been together 12 years. We don't have a time frame rule here. The agreement to be a married couple, cohabitate here in Texas, hold yourself out. Holding yourself out easy. You all on Facebook. Look at mm -hmm. my husband. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Changing your status. Mm -hmm. That's easy. <laughs> Following each other on Texas, current your insurance, the holding yourself out part easy. You could habitate here in Texas. Easy. It's the agreement to be a married couple that people just interesting can't get over that hurdle. That agreement is that just something you write up like a bill of sales when you sell in a car or something, or do you have no. to get a lawyer or because when people do things that formally, they go and get a marriage license and go get married, right? So okay. this is never formal. The every time that I've done a common law marriage divorce. They've always had a ceremony. That is how I was able to prove oh. the agreement. So two quick examples. One couple, they both had been divorced in the past. They had terrible divorces. They did not want to go through that again. Mm -hmm. So they was like, we still want to celebrate our love. We're going to have a wedding out of the country. Okay. We're not going to apply for any marriage license. That turns into your marriage. Tip. We're not going to do any paperwork. We're just going to invite our friends, go to this destination when I'm going to wear my white dress. You're going to wear your tux. We're going to walk down the aisle, say these vows, and move on. Mm -hmm. That proved the agreement because I had the vows. Mm. And what did the vows say? In the, you know everybody recording? And yes! What did the vows say that they agreed that they were they were married from this day forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or one that I did is they uh, they had two weddings. They had they were supposed to have two weddings. They had their traditional um, African ceremony, mm -hmm. and they were supposed to have their American wedding thereafter. Long story short, they never had their American wedding. But based upon what happened at their traditional wedding, Got there it. were agreements that now they are considered married, a part of their custom. So there was always a ceremony that helped me prove Got it. the agreement. But other than that, it's very hard. It's very hard because people don't write it up. Yeah, yeah. Those people who do formal things like that go and get officially married. Right. Mm. I had that a... so interesting. Uh, auntie that passed and she had a boyfriend since shoot forever yeah uh -huh. and that's all we call we that's auntie's boyfriend or whatever but she passed and now uh we're going through all that probate stuff trying to 
get him out the house because he thinks it's his house. And he was talking about common law marriage. But in Georgia, they don't even recognize, they don't recognize it at all. At all. See? That means he a boyfriend. And yeah. there's no protections for that. Wow. <laughs> Family uh, has protection. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Everybody keeps talking about marriage as this piece of paper. It's one powerful piece of paper. Hello? Mm. <laughs> It gives you a lot of protection. It affords yeah. you a lot of options. That paper mm. means a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got out of there. Uh, yes, sir. Right. Um, protected. Do you find a lot of differences or commonalities when you're dealing with people who are getting a divorce, going through a divorce, um, with people from different racial backgrounds? Do you find like maybe they fight differently or they want different things, more meaningful things for some and versus the other, anything like that? Everybody fights. Mm -hmm. um, the difference is, is that I notice black women know more about what's going on in their marriage versus oh, other races. I don't know if you saw this TikTok, but this was, I never said what race it was, but I'll just tell you. This mm -hmm. video went viral too, but it was an Italian couple. Oh. Older couple. Um, she thought that she had a happy marriage. She just thought that they fell out of love. She thought they would still be best friends. They raised their kids, downsized and everything. And she thought that she sold their big home that they lived in with their kids. And now they downsized to this little condo. Oh, but no. Mm -hmm. Her man still had the marital home and she thought it had been sold. What? I had to tell this old, sweet Italian lady in my office that she's a multimillionaire. Meanwhile, she's thinking her and her husband just own a little cleaners and living a little humble life. This man had boats. <laughs> Let me tell you what else he had. <laughs> One of the house that they shared as a married couple had mineral rights. Exxon Gas was paying them a lease monthly to get the oil from underneath the ground. This lady was a millionaire and she was riding around in a Buick. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up. You can't make the stuff up. So black women are nosy. We be nosy. We be <laughs> hold on though. Mail, looking around. Some other people just be having blinders on and they don't be having a clue. David. But how did you find cut that out, David? Oh, discovery. And oh. I also have a private investigator. Oh, okay. Now hold on before you say something. Cause I know you about to get into that. <laughs> I have a private investigator. Shout out to my girl. <laughs> okay. Is it a black woman? No, she's a white woman. <laughs> But you know, it's so funny. She's able to achieve a whole lot because she is white. Mm. I had a black, which I would love to work with, just hasn't happened. But she's able to just go snooping around people's yards and people just wave at her. <laughs> if I start snooping around people's yards, they're going to call the police on me. Yes, yeah. yes. So I'm, if she's able to live her life. I love and that. I want to be all in people's business and people just wave. <laughs> That is so true. Hilarious. That is so true. I used to cut off gas at, at the gas company. Man, as soon as they see me coming, mm -hmm. they let dogs out. They come out. They confront me. White boys get out the car. That hey, buddy, fun. I'm just checking. I'm just checking in. I'm about to spray down your gas meter. Meanwhile, he cutting them off. Yeah. And my my private is be in the way with murder. Nobody asks her a question. She just be in everybody business and nobody questions the thing. So it makes my life a lot easier because yeah. I get everything I need easy peasy because she's able to move around in this world without a care. She, That's amazing. She in the backyard opening up garages. Yes. So you got five boats <laughs> back here. Exactly. She rummaging through people's mail and the mail box looking like, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Putting the mail back. Nobody says a thing. Nobody calls the police. This is great. Mineral water. I, what, what is... The the, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now. Discovery. What is discovery? So discovery is something that occurs during a contested case when you're preparing for trial. Okay. So some states require it. Some states don't. Texas has gone back and forth. We've had discovery be mandatory, had it not be mandatory. But you're, it's a, when you're trying to discover mm -hmm. what the other side has. I got served with discovery yesterday and I said, oh, Lord. Everybody hates discovery because it's so time consuming, mm. but it's necessary because that's when you find out what the other side has. Okay. So I could serve discovery on the other side and make them turn over certain information to me. And by law, they have to. That's the beauty about discovery. They have to turn it over. So and if they don't, I mean, I can get them in trouble or I could just go through the bank. Like, if you don't want to give me your bank records, fine. I'll just subpoena Chase. <laughs> mm. 
Could, go to is the there store. a way for a person to hide that stuff like LLCs, trusts, or like how you people know. can try? Okay. But one of my outside of my private investigator, my other favorite person to work with is my forensic accountant. And they could find a penny account. in between your grandmother's couch cushion. They Ooh. that's their job. They find money in every it's amazing what they can do. They can find everything down to the penny. They are very expensive. Mm -hmm. So you usually only see them in high asset divorces because okay. they are expensive, but they will find so a forensic. I was gonna say, go through your team. You counsel. have a private investigator. You have yeah, a my private investigator. I have a forensic account, and I have my process server. Which more to come on that? Okay, more to come on that. I have my okay. process server. I have my paralegal. I have my assistant. Okay, who else? I have um like I contract like certain work out to other mm -hmm. attorneys that I don't feel oh. like doing. Okay, like I'm not about to do that discovery I got yesterday. I'm going to link my client up with a discovery attorney because they're out there. There's uh, there's attorneys who love discovery and you you just have them respond to your discovery for you. When Okay, that's what I was going to say, respond to it. So it's um, when you are served discovery, it is like a notice to say, hey, give me your stuff mm -hmm. versus when you are given the stuff. Right. So you have 30 days to respond. Okay. And it's going to cost my client a bunch of money for me to do it. So you might as well let me source it out because- you much would rather rack up a bill like that with them uh -huh. versus a bill like that with me. It's going to cost you a lot of money because of my, my hourly rate versus mm -hmm. a discovery attorney might be charging $75 an hour. Mm -hmm. So it's cheaper for them. And they're not, they're not your, they're not your attorney on a case. Like they're not showing up to court for you. Got they're it. reviewing what they're asking for and making sure that you comply. Got it. Easy. So if you understand the self discovery, then that's all that they're doing. Got so it. she's gathering the information that they have requested and she's going to put in a nice little package and make sure I get it submitted on time. Okay. And I asked, her, I was like, Hey, you got served with discovery. Do you want me to serve some back? And so she said, yes. Yeah. So now I have to think about the, I call it a little gift, the whole <laughs> lovely little gift. I'm going to send the other side. That's the only time I enjoy discovery <laughs> when I'm coming up with my own, because there's so many different things that you can do. You can depose someone. Mm -hmm. I love the deposition. Do you? Yes. <laughs> this is my secret weapon. I love depositions because they're under oath. So you're basically, imagine being at a trial without being in a courtroom. Mm -hmm. You're under mm -hmm. oath. You're, there's a court reporter typing out everything you're saying. It's just like being in court, but there's no judge. So people are under pressure mm -hmm. and you know, you're under oath and you know, they're writing down everything you say. So you better not lie <laughs> you lie every time. And then when we get to trial and you tell me something different than what you said in the deposition, I'd be like, oh, do we have a crime here? <laughs> <laughs> do you remember last month? Uh, you deposition? <laughs> do you remember under oath? Yeah, that you said I mean, oh my God. Do you want to take a moment to consult with your attorney before I call the police? <laughs> You know, so I love a good deposition. I do, but request for admissions. That's got gotcha. you. Too. Request for production. That's when you want documents. So you have all kinds of different options. Okay. But it can get expensive. So I'll talk to my client, let her know what options she has, and see if she wants to pay for it all. Do she want to pay for a little bit? Look at her. Wow. <laughs> now, with I'm I'm curious about this discovery though. Uh. Does this happen automatically or does the client request it? So like in the case of the Italian couple, did she say, yeah, look to see if we have anything or. She had no idea. Um, she, she thought they were going to be best friends. She thought this was going to be a simple divorce. There was something that I saw because like, I was asking her about like, what property do you currently own as far as like real estate? Mm -hmm. And she not knowing what nothing is, mm -hmm. not knowing nothing. Mm -hmm. I started to be like, well, just bring me what you have in my office. I'll have my staff sort through it. We trying to find the deeds. I'm trying to get something, something very basic. Uh -huh. When we were going through the documents, that's what triggered something. I saw something that didn't look right. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got my private investigator on the line. It was like, find me everything you can. <laughs> Give me everything. So <laughs> discovery used to be automatic. Oh. In 2021, I'm so glad they got rid of that because I was sick of it. <laughs> so now it's not automatic anymore. You actually have to serve it. So it's okay. I do it when my clients want it. And this time she didn't have a choice. They decided to serve it on her. So 
I hope she ain't hiding nothing. Hello? Hello. Oh, man. <laughs> I hope she ain't hiding nothing. She the one with the money, so. Ooh. Oh. So when this happens, are you the one in the uh, room with the um, the ex-couples and letting them know, hey, this is what we found. You have 15 boats that she didn't know about. Do you get to see that those reactions from those So couples? I usually save my my surprises like that for the courtroom ah, <laughs> ah okay so okay and, and it also it's it just depends on why we're in court right because if we're in court for trial then mm. i probably had to turn over a witness list so you probably see my private investigator's name on there and you also you know describe what their testimony is going to be like mm -hmm. or i can try to surprise them at like a hearing so that i never have to turn any of that information over oh. i just surprise them Got because it. there's certain things you have to turn over before trial. So I might just schedule a hearing just so it could be a surprise, surprise. <laughs> Man. I gotta you, come to Texas. I need to be in the courtroom. Let her in. <laughs> oh, I love doing that with mistresses too. Bring in, in wait, hold on. Say say more. <laughs> so what, what I'll do the is so in a divorce, you mo there's a bunch of different hearings you can have, but this is basically what almost everyone experiences. So you file for divorce, the person gets served. The very first hearing is called a temporary orders hearing. Nothing okay. tricky. It's a hearing that gets you a temporary order because sometimes you need some parameters in place because these people hate each other right, right. now. So we need to determine who's going to stay in the home, who's going to leave. Okay. He, let's say husband or wife leave, but who's going to now, who the child going to live with or you know, is dad going to have a visitation schedule? Is there going to be any child support? No child support. So these are parameters that are put into place so that y'all can have some guidelines mm -hmm. while y'all are going through a divorce. So sometimes at that temporary orders hearing, I bring the hose. But why? Why would you, what, what's, what would that, what so, that do? For? One of the ways to kick someone out of the house. For a good time. <laughs> is to show that they, they, is they don't have a livable situation like they cannot live together uh -huh. mm. and they need to be apart for the sake of the children okay. for the sake of their not being this not something turned into a domestic violence oh, situation man. so even <clears throat> though the mistress doesn't prove anything at this point in time mm. it helps me able to be maybe kick him out because once the court hears how they're at each other's throats behind whatever happened between him and this woman. He'd be like, okay, yeah, you're gonna have to go. Yeah. Um, but in a trial, I use it for something else because since this is a community property state, if I file for a fault divorce under the grounds of adultery, then I tie the fact that you were using your money, which is my client's money as well, to fund oh. your adultery. And so I'll bring in your little mistress and have her talk about how you're paying her rent, you taking all these vac vacations, because apparently you got more money. To uh -huh. get my clients, since you got so much to go. Oh, so I use them for different things yeah. depending on what time we're in in the case. Sometimes I just use it for shock value because sometimes people just spend money just to embarrass the other person. Court yeah. is open to the public in Texas. The courtroom's packed, and I'll invite your mama, your coworkers, and everybody to come watch. So See. sometimes we do it because my client just wants the shock value, and I'm always down for shocking moment. <laughs> Yeah, you, you old good jack of all trades, huh? So, <laughs> I, it, is utility belt. it has happened both ways. I mean, oh my god, I, I brought some mistress man too. Boop, boop. It happens both ways, but most of women enjoy that, yeah, more than men. And you be down with the shenanigans. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm I want to get him, embarrass him. You have to watch my life. video on how I serve someone in church, yes. Yes. When That's, I watched that one, I said, you guys, we got to get her on. Because has, what is happening at the church house? This stuff. This they stuff. Got, that, that'll wake me up in the morning. Now I get excited about That's, that. You, you, Laura's having a great time at her <laughs> time. Okay? Boy, Everybody boy. else is miserable. Laura's like, what do we have today? Wait till I drop this bomb to David. Yeah. When she told me she wanted to do that, I was like, do I need to pray about this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to do this the most respectful way I can, Lord. But you know, you want me to make sure this woman got the protection she needs. She needs some of this good strength. I'm gonna go ahead and make this happen. But you can't serve anyone on a Sunday in Texas, so I knew I wasn't gonna be interrupting service. Amen. Amen. I inter interrupted choir rehearsal uh -huh. on Saturday. <laughs> I don't think the Lord was upset about choir rehearsal. Absolutely not. 
<laughs> so you talked a little bit, you mentioned the process server because I know that was a key part to that story is that the <laughs> process server is it does the serving. I had to Google the name. I was like, yeah. what is the person called? And so, shout out to uh, my process server. He, the one who helped me create all these wonderful shenanigans, he just retired. I don't know what I'm going to do <laughs> without him. And he'd be like, Lauren, what you got for me today? Now I tell people my answers and they'd be like, what you, you want me to do what? But I got a plan. Okay. Stay tuned. Okay. I think I found someone who's going to indulge in my foolishness. Yes. Something big is coming. Okay. And it's going to be the biggest foolishness you've ever seen. Everybody tap in. Laura that, the lawyer. That is TikTok, a Instagram, all the platforms. I would do that. Is that like a side gig? Hello? Yeah, most people do it like as a side job because you can go to your regular you can serve someone anytime but i think it's 9 p.m and you just can't well this is in texas and you can't serve anyone on a sunday but you can go serve them on your lunch break you can go serve them on saturday you could just go do it and process service make great money and it's a wonderful job <laughs> it's a wonderful job you get to just walk to somebody hey is your, your name bob jones here you go if they don't pick it up throw it at their feet do you have to film it though? I want to like, film like the interview. No, this you just. Great. I'm going. I'm about to go in. Yeah. Indeed. It is good money. Hey. It might have taken you 30 minutes to go track them down because I like to gather as much as I can to make it easy for my process server. So I have mm -hmm. my client send me a photo of them. Mm -hmm. I make them give me his or he he or she the address to their employer, their home address, or, and then if they really want to just make it interesting, I'm like, I'll serve them wherever you want the grocery store. You want me to catch him at work? I mean, wherever you want it. And so we just get that information to my process service. So when he goes, it's a great chance that he gets them the first time. Mm -hmm. But it's nothing like serving someone and like they're the person who never thought they never knew they were married, like opens the door. Oh. They're like, what you want? And then we're like, oh, well, I'm here for someone. So like, and so now they got questions because now yeah. they're wondering why you're being served with papers and people didn't find out so and so's married or so and so has a mm. child because you get served for custody cases too. So it be tearing up people relationships. Custody I'm about to have case. all Surprise! type of disguises. You got a baby. <laughs> right. This is a custody case. Mm -hmm. But they make good money for, for the job. Like it's yeah. easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's good money for the job. And I think I'm about it's about to have a car full of envelopes. Mm -hmm. Who in your experience, if you can answer this general question, um, is there a uh gender that you say files first? most women. women women we are just in life we handle our business just mm -hmm. saying like y'all are married like who probably handles the i don't know if you're children of, of school age but who handles the enrollment <laughs> who handles mm -hmm. filling this out or submitting that thank god my husband has me because the <laughs> irs will be knocking on the door <laughs> i call the tax attorney uh -huh. I, you know yeah, women yeah. just handle to handle stuff so yeah that's why men will not want to be with you and, and just throw their hands in the air just and just be like, well, she ain't happy. I ain't happy. I'm going to go ahead and be with Susie. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to live in this misery and have my own separate life. Women yeah. will file and actually make it official. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That was my yeah. uh, assumption. So um, when men file first, you know, he's sick. Of. Yeah. 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 Ooh, that's a good point. Cause that's it's just point. naturally women just yeah seal the deal, handle business on paper. With uh, divorces, um, do you think there's a bias when it comes to um, men and women who gets what more yeah. often? Absolutely. You have to remember there's biases with anything, right? Judges are mm. people mm -hmm. and everyone has biases, um, even though people might not try to show them. Mm -hmm. But absolutely. Absolutely. I would be lying to make it seem like there's not a bias. There's 1000 <laughs> percent a bias. <laughs> We all have them. Just like mm -hmm. if I were to be put on the stand, I would do my best to remain impartial. But whatever you've experienced in your life make mm -hmm. you feel certain ways about certain situations. Mm -hmm. And that ultimately affects the decisions you make. Mm -hmm. Even when you don't think they are, they do. I'm sure the fact that I'm the only child and the only grandchild changed my perspective on yeah. life a lot versus my husband, who's one of three, you know? Mm -hmm. So everything that we go through in life changes your lens on things. Now, you don't have to use your bias for bad. There, I think that people, there are some amazing judges who still try to be fair, but I would be wrong to say that there's not a bias. Mm -hmm. There's a bias in everything. It's the bias in the medical field when you go to the doctor's office or the emergency room. It's a bias in the judicial field. There's biases 
everywhere. There's a bias with why my pro- my private investigator gets to roam around and <laughs> go through people's stuff and nobody calls the police. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so there's Ooh. biases all over us, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You just you can't expect for someone not to have a bias. You just expect them to be fair and follow the law. That's all I need from my judges. Yeah. I don't care what your biases are. Just follow the law and be fair. That's all I ask. Now, what does the law say about infidelity? Texas law. Texas law. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm a millionaire. My wife makes less than me, but she cheats on me. So (laughs) I I divorce her. The non-rich partner? Yes. The wife. We're rich because we're rich together in community. But the person who's not making the money is the one who cheats. Okay. My income (laughs) is way higher than my wife's income. She she cheats on me. I file for divorce. Mm-hmm. Does does her cheating help me out any? Amazing question. I've <laughs> only ever been asked this the other way around. No one ever has asked me this if it was the non high income spouse. Uh-huh. Such a great mm-hmm. question. So let's talk about it. <laughs> so cheating in itself is not going to get you anywhere. Mm-hmm. Get in line. Most people get <laughs> cheated on. Like that's just it. Like telling the court that you that your husband or your wife is cheating, mm-hmm. so get in line with the other hundreds of people they heard say the same thing two days ago. So just good old fashioned cheating. Nobody cares. I'm sorry. You care, and I care for you. <laughs> nobody cares. It's cold How you get the needle to move is okay. when you can tie money to the adultery. Remember, this is a community property state. The money doesn't belong to the wife. It doesn't belong to the husband. It belongs to the community. When you take from the community, okay. that's when you have a problem. Mm-hmm. So if she's not the high-earning spouse, then maybe she's not tying money to it. Maybe the man's fitting her bill, and mm-hmm. maybe her mistress man is paying for everything. But if you can tie money to the adultery, that's when the needle starts to move. Remember I said that the law didn't say 50-50. It said just and right. Okay. So mm-hmm. if you can show that your wife is who makes less, but was still funding her adultery by using community property. She not getting fifty percent because we got to make the community whole. She yeah. might get forty. She might get thirty. That's when mm-hmm. you start to move the needle, tie the adultery back to the community property. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know what community property is, the most important piece of community property is your income. Every penny you make from your job in your marriage is community property. Mm-hmm. So when you start spending your income. To fund your adulterous ways, that's when you start moving the needle from that 50-50. Oh. Even when like accounts are split, even if they you never join accounts, your money, your money, my money, it yeah. is still community. You don't care whose name is on something. So let's just say you have a stay-at-home wife and a husband that works and his name is on the house and hers isn't. It doesn't matter whose name the house is. It doesn't matter whose name the car is in. If it was purchased during the marriage, it's community property. And that's where it begins. Got and it. then you start to try to say, well, no, something separate, this was a gift or this was an inheritance, then you have to show by clear and convincing evidence that it is. Other than that, it's going to be presumed community. Y'all are going to have to start sharing some things. <laughs> That's the uh, word of the day, community. Property. Well, two words of the day, community. So property. prenups, postnups help with all of this because when you don't have that, <clears> you're down to the Texas Family Code and the Texas Family Code is going to tell you what you're going to have to do with your stuff. Mm-hmm. If you don't like those rules, for those people, they should get a prenup, but those people should get a post mm-hmm. Other than that, stick. That's the rules you're gonna have to live by. But when you have agreements, you get to live by your own rules. Mm-hmm. I love how you said that my question was great and then answered it and was like, suck it up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gets cheated on. They do. Because people be coming and telling me that I mean they I've heard some terrible things involving cheating. Terrible. Not mm-hmm. just people fathering children outside the marriage, people giving their spouses diseases. I've heard horrible things. Mm-hmm. But you have, you just can't have cheating. You got to have something mm-hmm. crazy like that for mm-hmm. it to move the needle because you are basically saying I, the community needs to be made whole mm-hmm. because of what the person is doing is just so egregious. Sometimes cheating isn't egregious. The ex that maybe are involved with the cheating can be egregious and that's what kind of changes things. But if you went to your husband and you, I'm about to give y'all an exclusive. Do I haven't it. this publicly ever in life. If you live in Texas, run. You can no longer go through your spouse's phone. It's wiretapping. <gasps> I have never said that because I am still so upset about the rule. What? And I'm trying to muster up my anger to stay calm enough to make a video about it. No, all you women Wait, out there. Wait, say it again. 
man. Yeah, man. You can no longer go through your spouse's phone. It is called wiretapping. That's just in Texas. There is a federal wiretapping. <laughs> Watch out for that one too. It's, it's horrible. It's horrible because that's where the evidence is. Yeah. We had a consultation today. He's cheating. How did you find out? I went through his phone. Well, I can't even mention that in court because I don't want you to get arrested. Oh my goodness! Wiretapping. So when I when I'm not angry enough, I will make a video all about it. It is terrible news. So terrible how, news. How how does that terrible. how does that law come to pass? Was did somebody have to um, vote somebody into office? Well, I'm, yeah, I'm sure the legislators got. So there's like legislative terms where they all get together and change laws and create new ones. Mm. So this was a very big deal, especially for the area of law that I'm in, because text messages and going through people's phone is the hand I fail with. Yes. So, <laughs> That's what I was about to say. Like. And it would pique my interest because I kind of heard some whisperings about wiretapping. And I was like, I don't know what they're talking about. But an attorney got in trouble. Oh. When an attorney got in trouble, then everybody started whispering about what happened. Her client went through her husband's phone. It was an iPad. They was on the Apple plan. Oh. So everybody's Apple products is ding, 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 mm -hmm. ding, ding. She go to reading it. And her husband is all kind of unmentionable. Mm -hmm. And so she screenshots it, gives it to her lawyer. But now the lawyer's in possession with in possession of unlawful mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here came the bar. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, she no. lost her license. That's the Taylor case. But once I oh, she lost that, the license by I that? was like, oh, this is serious. Yeah. Let me, let me make sure I go and study on wiretapping. So I have CLEs coming up. CLEs is continuing legal, legal education. You're still in law school as an attorney. We still okay. go to school. <laughs> so that was going to be one of my questions of, of how you stay informed about changes to family law. So you have to you go, you have classes, courses. Yeah. There. So you have to, because the law is always changing. Yeah. So somebody who went to law school 30 years ago, that wouldn't help you today. The law hasn't changed 30 times since then. Yeah. So we are required to do a certain amount of hours a year in wow. order to keep our license. So I go to the ones that, for my area of law, yeah. I go to all the family law ones. So that's the ones you would have to go to. But yes, you have to go and stay abreast on all the changes because family law changes every odd year. So it changes all the time, oh all the time. So yeah, we have to get caught up. So I'm so sad. Yes, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's your, crazy. That's your kryptonite. Oh my goodness. It's ruining everything for everything. me. Everything. And, and I was really upset in September because they said I couldn't track people anymore. Yeah. Yeah, you can't have trackers. And I couldn't sick my private investigator to go follow people anymore. You can no longer track people, but then I found a loophole. Okay. It says you cannot track people while there's a pending case. So I just track them before I file. Before you file. <laughs> mm. But I gotta find a loophole in this <laughs> wiretapping. <laughs> Cause I need the text messages. I need the videos, and they're all yeah. in his phone or her phone. And yeah, I need them. oh my! That's hey, crazy. you know, you know, things happen. You know, that's really yeah. interesting. I might have to figure out how to maybe subpoena AT and T, Sprint, yeah. see if I can get it that way. But I don't want to go through all of that. Yeah. I'll oh, figure well, it out. Wish me luck. I will. But to your point, though, if the family is all under one plan. You know, I'm not looking through your phone. I get it because Mel can text on her cell phone and it goes to our daughter's pad sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I could be on there. Get it that way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But can you, you know, can I could you be playing a game on the, the pad, not looking through her phone. But it's, it's a tricky thing. And mm -hmm. that's it. I mean, the first thing that I heard, I was like, first of all, it's community property. So she should be able, yeah. he should be yeah. able, everybody should be able. And they said, no, 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 no. The characterization of the property does not matter. I said, well, me and my husband, we have each other's passwords. Yeah. Like, what about that? And yeah. Like, if you're going outside of the scope in which is reasonable to mm. assume the as to why you have that password. Like, I I never have my husband's phone, but usually if I do, it's because my phone's dead and we're trying to get to the open the GPS and find our way home. Something yeah. like that, right? So yeah. That's like the reasonable expectation of when someone gives you their password, what they think that you're doing. Got so it. So if it's not, they're basically saying in, they're not giving you their password for you to take it, screenshots and use it against them in the court of law. Yeah. That goes outside the scope of why they gave you the password, which now makes it criminal. Got it. That's your loophole insane. is this. You need to tell your clients, drain your battery to your phone. <laughs> Sir. Just Sir. plan, just drain it. And then you say, my phone was dead. It was charging. I mean, 
Hello. And I had what I'm going to do when they were supposed to be at the GPS and exactly. somebody ended up in the text messages sending Somehow. screenshots and send them to themselves. Exactly. We're going to be um, in jail. <laughs> we're going to be they right there with you. you. And then the police going to come uh, with me. Yes. They ain't no. no. We need your videos. Don't go to jail. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, some men passed that law. Just they, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. They did okay. that. They I might be in out your way. My husband's from California. Okay. So he always talks about how he wants to get out of Texas. So one day, come on. We were talking we about going you. to Texas. I feel like uh, the laws here. Because so many celebrities are always getting I'm married. I'm not practice law in California. I'm never taking a bar exam another day in my life. That's over. <laughs> That's over. I have PTSD even thinking about That's real. the bar. I will know it's <laughs> over. If I if I want to keep my license here, I'll do my CLEs and take my other couple cases I want to do here. I'm not taking the California bar. <laughs> no. Uh, so you have to take the bar in each state. Unless you are, unless you have a state that. Yet your licensing has what's called reciprocity with mm -hmm. another state. So all the states that Texas does has recipro reciprocity, and I'm not interested in practicing. The two oh, states yeah. I care about, we don't have reciprocity, which would be Louisiana because I'm from New Orleans, uh -huh. or California because that's where my husband's from. Got and it. they don't have reciprocity with either states, which means I would have to take Got the bar. Like, I think it's like Utah. <laughs> So <laughs> well, I don't care to go. Uh, <laughs> I'm not I just waving it to those states. I'm not practicing law there. <laughs> Uh, I think we got through all of my questions. Is there anything additional you want to, you didn't gave us the exclusive, you didn't gave us all the tea, but is there anything I didn't ask that you're like, girl, you should have asked this? Um, no, I feel like it was a great interview. Uh, mm -hmm. If I could give one piece of advice, let's talk about this. Yes. I'm actually about to go film a video for TikTok. Okay. As soon as we get off this call. And all I can say is be careful who you marry okay because mm -hmm. you could it's just crazy how you can literally tie yourself to a monster mm -hmm. and never know you will it's so shocking men and women protect yourselves because i think people just haphazardly go through life not caring about the effects that could come yeah be careful of the people you tie yourself to and that's with marriage and that's having children because mm -hmm. they can ruin your life. Mm -hmm. Be careful. Protect yourself. Protect what you've worked so hard for. And that doesn't always have to be monetary things. That could be your mental health. Mm -hmm. Protect yourselves. Be careful. And don't just be haphazardly just going through life, doing this, doing that. Protect yourselves. Because the video I'm about to make is about a woman whose husband was drugging her every night <gasps> and raping her for a decade. Oh my goodness. Did you hear about that? No. She said she had a happy marriage, amazing husband, amazing father, amazing grandfather. He was being investigated by the police for something he did in the grocery store. And when they confiscated his laptop, they saw a file and it was decades of him letting strangers come in and rape his wife in her sleep. And he was drugging her every night. Oh my goodness. Old I people <clears throat> acting like this. She's 70 years old. 70? She been married 50 years, have been against, married since they were 20. They what? have grandchildren. And she said she never suspected a thing. She never knew. What he, state is that? It's in Paris. It's in France. Oh, I think somebody sent it to me. I think I didn't read it. I wonder. That's insane. I wonder his family history. Like, did he have, was there any red flags for her to that she overlooked? Because there are some stories that we don't heard of people just overlooking just plain red flags and not and those are the people who become my clients because um, we know their red flags don't turn green <laughs> you, I'm, that is crazy i might be you dogging know, men that's and she didn't even suspect him she said the only thing that she got like now that she's thinking back on she said she was going to the doctor because she was having memory loss issues but she never suspected that her husband was drugging her he had an ad out like yeah come sleep with my wife he had rules on what they had to do when they came to the house they had to change the clothes in the kitchen because he was afraid that they would leave something behind in the bedroom he, he had a hand warmer they would have to use so they would not like, touch her with cold hands okay. and wake her up <gasps> Well, that's what I'm about to go film about. Y'all better watch yourselves and get yourselves. The people are crazy. She crazy. never suspected. But remember, I told you, black women are nosy. Mm -hmm. We be finding out a lot of stuff. Like we more so be in the midst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
it's, that's one thing I find that's a lot different from my black clients versus other races. They, mm-hmm. when I ask them a question, they usually have an answer. <laughs> How much does your husband make? <laughs> they be like, mm-hmm, I got everything you need. Yeah. Some other people, they don't know. Oh my! What? You know, what? My husband handles everything, or mm-hmm. I don't know. Like you don't even like where 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 do you bank at? Yeah. You don't know where your bank is. You don't so know much- where your bank account. So much of that, that's so much culturally uh, can be so different, you know, yeah. people just the way money and marriage and questions are at things are handled is just very by culture yeah. sometimes that's that's insane. That, so is- that is the main difference that I see black women know a lot we nosy we know a lot we peep out mm-hmm. a lot and other people just they don't pay attention mm-hmm. as much. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Well, That's why well, y'all rule the world, you know. know. This yeah, is a man's yeah. world. But also, too, I mean, there's a lot to, I'm sure there's a pros and cons to everything. I'm sure that yeah. for some men, they like those type of women. And sure. that works out in some people's relationships. But just culturally, that's the main difference. Black yeah. women are clued in. Yeah. You got to wake up early and stay up late. <laughs> so pull one of all of us. Because we know see. Yes, that's we the truth. We know I mean, like, you got some mail. What is? <laughs> what's that? So what's that? <laughs> I won't open your mail. Oh, <laughs> Let's tell me. End up in the corner. Where's this letter from? <laughs> Are you in trouble? What's going on? <laughs> so that's that's the difference. We ask questions. We nosy. We be in yeah. the business. Yep. Sometimes no. that gets us in trouble too. That's too well. Since you can't go through phones. <laughs> Ladies, I'm trying to oh, tell y'all to stay out of jail. That's going to cripple. That's going to cripple y'all. It is. Uh, it uh, is. That, that phone, boy. Woo. Um, Thank you for having me. We'll have to make this a part two. Oh, my goodness. Yes, please. This is amazing. I am so glad. Listen, what, we what were... are your watchers saying? Are they saying, can you see anything? Like, are oh, they yes. Oh, they've been over here, first of all, cracking up, <laughs> loving you so much. Uh Follow me on all my platforms, Lauren. Yes. For the lawyer. Absolutely. It will... And Instagram. And if you happen to be in Dallas in the family law services, laurenthelawyer.com. But I want to know what they're saying. Uh, a bunch Do of yeses. Like Do they want me to get out of here? No, they love you. A bunch of yeses. Uh, they said, I forgot about them. Apparently, <laughs> I've been so excited. I forgot to talk. I'm sorry, Patreon. She's amazing. We love you. Uh, I'm about to go down a rabbit hole watching all of her TikToks. Love you, girl. Um, hypothetically, this is uh, one of our... Actually, Terrence Cox, who um, is in the Patreon, and he is uh, the one who reached out to your team. Hypothetically, if one was looking... He asks silly stuff sometimes, so I don't know what he's about to say. Hypothetically, if one was looking to break up with their child's mother or father, what should they do <laughs> See, to prepare just in case there's a custody battle, hypothetically? Well, the breakup isn't our problem. The court doesn't get into relationship matters like that unless it's a marriage, right? Mm -hmm. So if you aren't married then and you're not common law married, then breaking up and getting together, like, do what you want. It depends on what what do you want as a result of the breakup. So, for instance, let's say, if especially for men, if you are about to break up with your girlfriend and y'all have a baby and you don't want to be put on child support, Mm-hmm. Well, then you can't behave like a weekend dad. No. You have to be a father who's heavily involved. You have to be the one who does take your child to the doctor's appointments, who does go to school, who does show up for parent-teacher conferences. Because if you don't have that, then the court's probably not going to give you the option to have your child live with you 50% of the time and the child live with mom 50% of the time. Because I love putting them on the stand and be like, what's your child's pediatrician name? Oh. Do you know their allergies? Or I could ask, is peanut butter your child's favorite snack? Oh, yeah, I love peanut butter, but like your child allergic. <laughs> you about to kill your baby. You're about to kill so stuff like that. So it, I maybe consult with the family uh, attorney before you break up. So maybe you can start putting your chess pieces in order. Uh-huh. Because I, I I'm not a magician. I'm great at my job, but I can't turn you into a weekend dad and all of a sudden make you father of the year and Got let it. It convince the court to give you 50% custody. It's it's probably not happening. Yeah. That's a good point, actually. That's um, a setup question. I know people. I don't even know if this is a good question, but I'm gonna ask it because everybody loves to get on the internet and complain about child support. A lot of people, 
<laughs> want to be like, uh, why she get to have all his money? The point of child support is to take care of the child as if you there that was still a unit, right? And how is it right. determined? In the, you have to remember everything always boils down to money, right? I could speak for Texas. Okay. Texas doesn't want to be responsible for your children. <laughs> they want to keep people off of Medicaid and uh -huh. food stamps and all of this government assistance for the people who might really need it, like the disabled or the elderly, or something like that. They want if there's a child out here for both parents to be providing. Mm -hmm. They don't want the government assistance flooded because the child's father isn't contributing. So yeah. Texas will come after you and be like, hey, because we're tired. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. They're like, yeah. you need to pay. Cause the state is tired. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Uh, How I'm much here. though? What's the percentage of, of the person's income, whether it's the husband or wife? So we will start off as if there's no uh, children outside of that relationship, because that changes the numbers too. So if it's just a husband and wife or a girlfriend, boyfriend, there's no other children outside the ones in that relationship. Mm. One child is 20% and each child goes up by 5%. With a max of 40%. Oh. So if you have two children, 25%, three children, 30%, four children, 35%, but the max is 40. So even if you got 12 kids, the max is 40. Oh, of okay. your income. So 40% of, of your income is yeah. allocated amongst however many of the children. But when there starts to be children outside uh -huh. that unit, then the then that mother will start to receive less. Mm -hmm. So if you were receiving 20%, let's say you and your husband got a divorce, you had one child, 20% of his income, but then he meets another lady, five years later has another baby, you're not getting 20% anymore. You're getting 17.5. Oh, wow. And it just keeps changing depending on all the new families that so-and-so has created. And that's that's whether he's with the new baby's yes. family or not. It's just another baby is added so mm -hmm. you know. and then one thing that texas does not do that i hear a lot of people say their state does is not a even though it's a community property state is your spouse's income is not affected as far as for child support but i hear some other states that it is but no we don't look at if you get married your spouse's income is not a part of child support here mm -hmm. not here if the father increases his pay though mm -hmm. that his child support does Oh, I was going to say, you mentioned modification. And is that... Exactly. You would do a modification lawsuit and say that his income increased, child support needs to increase. It's a percentage of your income. So if your income goes lower, it changes. But you also got to be careful about when income goes lower because if the court finds that you're intentionally mm. underemploying yourself, they will calculate child support at your earning potential. Hello? So we'll quit your job if you won't. <laughs> This is how much you could be making. So that's right. how much we want. Oh, you was you was a doctor last week, but you you, you a bus driver last yes. week? Got you. We're gonna base your child support off of that doctor salary that you had last year. Oh, that's it's, hilarious. That <laughs> happens all the time. <laughs> so we you cannot terminate your rights to get out of child support. You can terminate your parental rights and still pay child support. Do mm. people do that? They try until they, they realize they can still be put, put on child support and they'd be like, oh, it's not worth it. I bet. Who that else is paying child support for a child you have no legal rights to? Now, okay, I have two, I have two more things. I have That's two more so things. That's so extreme. That's how I know we need a part two. Yes. yes. I know, I know. We're going to have to let okay, it go. I know. Go ahead, ask your question then. Mel, Hello? I, I said Mel. You about to start okay, with me. let's stop all this. Uh, <laughs> I pre We're pretending now. <laughs> uh, my wife gets pregnant by another man, but mm -hmm. I'm, the, I'm the husband. You are good. Is that I, my I child? You, this. you are good. That's a good question. I'm going to let you finish. Go ahead. Do I have to pay for this newborn child because I'm the husband? Yes. What? Let's talk about it. You you got to give them, them questions he got. That's he a has good questions. He does. Because okay. he asks me stuff nobody ever asks. That's the good stuff. This is the stuff people need to be asking. That is not fair. So let's talk about it. In Texas, we have different kind of fathers. We have presumed fathers. Okay. We have adjudicated fathers. Okay. okay. So let's start. Let's start with the one you care about. Presumed. When you are married, your husband is automatically that child's legal father. So if y'all separated, mm -hmm. I hate to use y'all's example, but just make it easy. Mm -hmm. And then y'all was one of the people who never went to go get a divorce. Uh huh. You ain't got your little boyfriend. He cannot sign the birth certificate. Because the child already has a legal father, your husband. Oh, wow. And guess what? Oh. 
<laughs> a D with a DNA test, he cannot get off the hook. What? So if you are still married, let's say you didn't know who you got pregnant by. And your husband just goes and says, I'm not the father. Here's my DNA test. He's still responsible. Really? A DNA test does not take him off the hook. The only way for a presumed father to get off the hook is to bring the man. You better go, go find him. The daddy <laughs> and bring him to court. That's well, the who was sleeping with my wife so I can get off the hook. Well, I have yeah. a video about this on my TikTok. You can, not if you're a presumed father. Okay. If you're an acknowledged father, you get to acknowledge father or okay. a ju- adjudicated father. That's different. Okay. When you're somebody's husband. Yes. That you are a presumed father. When you fall under that presumed father category, you cannot get off the hook with a DNA test. Because the court don't care. You're married <laughs> to her. You're going to pay for this child because what? Texas don't want to pay. Yeah. The only way to get off the hook is not a DNA test. You got to go find that child father and bring him here so we can make him pay. Somebody going to pay. And Somebody if it's not pay. you, find who it's going to be. Somebody going to pay. So a DNA test does not get a presumed father off the hook. You better go find who she slept with. That's insane. Yeah. That is okay. Wait, so that's presumed. Sorry, that's I presumed. cutting you off. Go ahead. You have something to say? Nah, no. <laughs> he's like, I don't think I want to know anymore. <laughs> that's presumed. What's the next one? Acknowledged. Okay, we have adjudicated. So, an acknowledged father is someone who boyfriend, girlfriend, they go have a baby and he signs the birth certificate at the hospital. Okay, that's the acknowledged father because when you sign a birth certificate at the hospital, it's called an acknowledgement of paternity that you sign. Okay, that's an acknowledged father. Okay. That a DNA test can get you off the hook. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. A uh, adjudicated father is somebody who's now court ordered to be the father. So let's say you usually see adjudicated fathers happen. You have a deadbeat baby daddy, and you try to get child support. You sue him for child support. He's been served. He doesn't show up to court. Mm-hmm. Texas gonna make you pay. No. So Texas will then adjudicate him oh, as it. the legal father. So now he's responsible for paying for the child. So that's an adjudicated father. Got so it. we have presumed, yep. acknowledged, and adjudicated. adjudicated. That presumed father is dangerous. That's some dangerous stuff. That is. I just didn't feel about that. And I feel like it did not. Like all my crazy courtroom stories go viral. That shit went viral. Yes. That shit get people's heads rolling. Yes. Yeah. Because the only way out of it is dying. What? <laughs> oh, go find the man. The man would have to die. What about? He ain't about to find his dude. The you, dude can still probably... be, you can still be responsible for child support in your death. Can you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How? <laughs> it becomes a debt of your estate. So just oh. like when you, like when we all die, you think the mortgage company they're gonna be like, oh, just keep the house. They're gonna be like, uh-uh. <laughs> pay this loan. Pay this loan. You so yes, money. when you die, child support becomes a debt of your estate. Your family gonna have to scramble and figure it out. This man up in heaven, like God. You oh, still hell. ain't escaped child support. Oh, hell, yeah. <laughs> Look at all that. That's crazy. Yeah, nobody's ever asked me about that husband being responsible. That is an amazing question. To me, that's the stuff people need to know. So, I just say be careful who you tie yourself to. Yep. Yeah, and and this this is I'm glad I asked that question and you gave that answer. So to all you men and women out there dating somebody that's still married, Amen. oh, we ain't got a divorce yet, but we about to get one. And oh, you go get pregnant. Hello? And she's married to this. That's the the man is the baby. The man is still the father. That's probably the, the man that is cheating with the woman who's married is probably happy about that. <laughs> and he's responsible for that child until... If he ever finds whoever the real father is, yeah. he's going to be responsible for that child. And I, I've had a situation where a father knew he was not the father, but they had another child together. Uh-huh. So the court was like, you you the daddy legally now. <laughs> and they were not married at the time. that they, So they were a boyfriend and girlfriend at the time that they had their first baby. Okay. Boyfriend and girlfriend. She wanted to tell him he wasn't the father. Mm-hmm. He still married her. Mm-hmm. Went on to have another baby. Mm-hmm. He did not like he, she. She wasn't really forthcoming. Like he was on mm-hmm. the birth certificate and stuff like that. But after he found out that the child wasn't his, he didn't legally terminate that parent-child oh. relationship. So the court was like, "Statute of limitations." Oh, you obviously want to be his daddy because you didn't <laughs> handle your business. You the daddy. You the daddy. And he was put on child support for both children. Oh wow! 
That's on TikTok too. Enjoy. I be trying to give all the good information. <laughs> I be trying to tell y'all what's going on. Texas is ruthless. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> we going we, okay. we we can do a part two. Yeah. But this this the cliffhanger right here. Oh god. Okay, this the cliffhanger. I saw this on Instagram. There you you like, got the good questions. So there was an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> there was an athlete. He had uh -huh. a girlfriend and got her pregnant. Big money athlete. So he gives her uh, um whatever child support every every month up to, up towards like twenty thousand dollars or whatever. But it's documented on PayPal or whatever, him giving her money, right? 18 years later, she sues him for child support. Oh. And because he doesn't go through the court system. It's a gift. It's a gift. What? And now he owes her back child, child support, support for 18 years. Even though he was giving her money. Next time on the deep. <laughs> Cliffhanger. Come <laughs> soon. Y'all have to come back for part two for that. Yes. You do give the best cliffhangers. Lord be on the video like, I got stuff to do now. I'll be back. You be like, yeah. <laughs> why would you do this? But I always come back. And it's do. always y'all worth the win. It do. You do. That's All right. a great cliffhanger. We talk about it in part two. Yes, we will. We will. Let me office know. Let me see what I got going on in our club. <laughs> Let me see. I want to yeah. apologize to the men. I've been talking bad about y'all, man. We got it bad out here, Playboy. Y'all yeah. better, y'all better Be watch out. Man, man, yeah. man, man. That's a great question, though. I can't remind me. I will forget that that was the question. Yes, remind oh, I ain't me. That is good right stuff. We're it gonna have to talk about mm -hmm. gifts. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to talk about how child support is supposed to be paid. We can okay. also talk about the cap of child support because okay. ten thousand is higher than the Texas cap. So we'll get to it. Yes, and cap. Okay. Thank you so much for doing this. This was amazing. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank Love you. I, your I know we are. So, I'm so excited. I'm like giddy. I've been very excited all week. So thank you for doing this. Make sure everyone, if you're watching this, make sure you follow Lauren the lawyer. It's Lauren underscore the lawyer, right? Yes, on social media. Okay. And my website is Lauren the lawyer. Okay, Lauren the lawyer for the website. And if you're in Dallas. Yeah, I'm in Dallas. And you're looking for an attorney to handle your divorce. Yeah. Hit up, Miss Lauren. Especially if you like this kind of energy, because I'm yes. not for everybody. Yes. Like, mm -hmm. for people who be like, you know, I just want peace. Mm -hmm. I'm going to refer you to my peaceful friend. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not peaceful. I'm the one you call when you want to stir something up, when you want to mm. slide to the other side. That's when you call. You trying to shenanigan. <laughs> I do do some uncontested divorces. I mean, when I do them, I really enjoy them. But if I got to put my good clothes on and go to court, I'm not keeping the peace. <laughs> this is yeah, we'll have yeah. to talk about. You made a video about contested versus uncontested. We'll have to. Uh, I'm adding yeah. that. If it's uncontested, and I don't have to step in court. I like those. But yeah. if I got to put my suit on. <laughs> I'm this, not stopping till I see tears. <laughs> this profession suits you very I know. well. Listen, somebody, I'm not a lawyer, but somebody asked if I was which one I would want to be. And I was like, I don't know. I think it would be this guy. Will, I, want, this I want this. This it is, would be this this is it. Uh, well, it. Let me know. Is there a way I'll be able to watch this? Because my yes. mom follows you on TikTok. Oh, I love it. And so I was like, oh, I'm doing a podcast. Like, is it going to be posted? Probably. I don't know, mom. She's asked, was it going to be live? I said, I don't know. So if you can send me. Absolutely. We will so absolutely. I can give it to your fan, my mom. Yeah. I love it. Hey, mom, uh, I am. It will be posted. Uh, we are recording this on Wednesday, but it will be posted on Friday on my YouTube. It also will be everywhere that podcasts are found. Um, so like all the audio versions. And then I usually try to clip up something fun and put it on TikTok as well, since that's my yeah, biggest platform. Send it to me and I'll promote it and put it on okay. my story and all of that stuff. So yes. I can, I can watch our wonderful time together. Yes, I love it. This all right. was wonderful. But no, this was great. You are awesome <laughs> at you. asking questions. I mean, phenomenal, yes. phenomenal, phenomenal. Thank that's you, the questions you. people need to be asking. Mm -hmm. so sure. I'll look forward to part two. All right. Cool. Have a good one. Have a good day. Bye. All right. All right. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I Man. know y'all were asking so many questions and I wanted to get to them all and I got to like none of them. Some of them, the ones that I asked though, came from the Patreon. Um, so some of them I got in from y'all. Um, we can go if, through this and have them for 
part the two. next one yeah for sure we'll definitely <clears throat> schedule a part two shout out to terrence cox because he's always going to get us a good guess. Always, always, always. So thank you again to Lauren, the lawyer, for joining us. That was so much fun and so informative. Like, so much information that we had no idea about. Shout out to you for asking great questions today. If you ever get pregnant by another man, that You're baby not gonna is not going to be fathered by me. You're not going to be on part two, okay? That baby, yeah. Don't ask questions about why. That baby would not. I will fake my death. Thing. You see? You I will see fake this, my death. How did we get here? You gonna fake your death? Yes. You just I got to get out of woman, it. Black women, I will find you. Mm-hmm. Try to fake a death. I will find she you. She got to investigate, man. That's, All right. That's thank cool, you. Though. Thank you. Thank you. We will make sure Lauren's information is in the description of um, the episode. Uh, please follow her, Lauren underscore the lawyer. Mm-hmm. If you are looking for her on social media, she said her website is Lauren the lawyer. Uh, dot com so you can go there for her website yep. uh follow me i'm not a lawyer but on all of the things gooseby g-o-o-l-z-b-y on ig and building with goose on youtube yep. thank you again until next time court is adjourned